Um, I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Some of my struggles uh, have included codependency and drug addiction, and my name is Donald. In the book of Luke, uh, chapter 1, verse 37, it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. My story begins um, February 23, 1972. That was the day that I was born. When I was headed out of the birth canal, and everything seemed to be going as planned. And uh, that was until I decided to turn around and try to come out feet first. I guess I wanted to hit the ground running. Uh, but the doctors didn't let that happen. And the doctors didn't let that happen. And uh, that was the first time that I tried things my way. And I wasn't even born yet. And I got hurt. And I got a broken nose and two black eyes out of that. It was also the first time that I tried things my way and caused my mom unnecessary pain by them having to turn me back around. But unfortunately, this wouldn't be the last time that I tried things my way. So enough about the first day. Let's talk about some of the um, 17,000 plus days that have followed. My first 27 years were very active. I had some parents. I had awesome parents. Um, they taught me the difference between good and bad and right from wrong. And as, and as a matter of fact, all of uh, our needs were met. I was high energy, and I was always looking to make people laugh. I was confident and outgoing, and I thought I had it figured out. Well, my wife figured out, that is. Uh, my first addiction, looking back, was probably girls. And everything I did uh, revolved around girls, like what clothes I wore, um, where I worked out or when I worked out, the cars I drove, uh, music I listened to, and so forth. Um, after high school, I got a really good job. Yeah. And my pride was borderline narcissistic. Um, I had it. I had it go on, and you didn't have to ask me because I was probably going to tell you before you ever got a chance to uh, mention that I was kind of full of myself. I judged people and thought I was better than them, especially druggies. In my opinion, drugs were bad. People who used them were bad, and they were all hell bound. And at the age of 23, I decided I was getting on because everyone knows that life ends at 30, right? Not really, but that's what I thought. So I found a girl. Um, she had a daughter. And um, shortly after we had another daughter together, and we got married. And in, in my mind, um, life seemed to be working out just like I thought it would. I had a good job. I had a wife. I had a home, a couple kids. And my entire identity was wrapped up in what I thought a man was supposed to be, or what a man was supposed to do. And that was go to work, be a provider, be a good dad go to work or go to church and um, be a faithful husband. At 27, I was on top, of, on top of the world. I wasn't very humble, though. I pretty much thought that my stink didn't stink. I was working two jobs and saving money to buy a home. Um, we had money in the bank and everything seemed perfect. And then I hear the dreaded words from my wife. Hey, we need to talk. So we, we sit down and we started to talk. She says, I want a divorce. She said, I have changed you as much as I'm going to change you, which has been a lot. You work too much. You are a workaholic. You spend all of your free time with kids. And in, a, and in that blink of an eye, my entire identity was destroyed. And what I basically I did in them, instead of staying in church, I went the other direction. I moved in with a buddy and tried to, fit, and tried to fit in with the social scene, which I'd been away from for quite some time. Um, I was depressed and I was confused. I wanted to be numb. Drinking only seemed to make things worse. But little did I know, things were about to get a lot worse. My roommate, roommate decided to have a party. And before this night, I had never even seen a drug, let alone used them. Um, someone offered me cocaine. I was just drunk enough and depressed enough. I said yes. Instantly, I felt good and I fell in love. However, the next day I was ashamed. Do you remember earlier um, when I my previous comment about drugs, well, now my mind was conflicted and guilt overwhelmed me because of the way that I judge people. Now I was judging people, myself, the same way. But instead of stopping, I made things worse. Over the next couple months, I added ecstasy, pain pills, weed, and acid to the list. During this time, I met a girl. Um, she liked to party too. And our first late date lasted seven days. And in those seven days, we got pregnant. I didn't know her, and she didn't know me. Um, once again, 
just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they got worse. The next 12 years, I was in an all on again, off again relationship, codependent relationship with her. And it seemed to be um, every six to nine months, she would find a new love of her life, and I'd be asked to leave, and then I would return. My life was an emotional, drug induced roller coaster. Oh, did I mention? With with his ex, well, we did lots of drugs together, like meth, Adderall, crack, Xanax, and um, so on and so forth. So for the first time in my life, I was thinking I might be better off dead. I was having first time um, suicidal thoughts. Ironically, uh, my view of suicide in the past was heartless and very uncompassionate, much like my uh, viewpoint on drugs. I used to say. Suicide was uh, just a way of someone's, or just someone's way of getting attention, and that they should hand them the gun and just do it. I was very conflicted by my suicidal thoughts, and by myself, second guessing my previous thoughts about drugs and suicide. I went to a psychiatrist, and I was diagnosed bipolar and ADHD. I refused to believe it and continued to self-medicate. I remember being high, alone in the motel room. I was broke, depressed, lonely, and desperate. Um, I, I made a call to my mom in South Carolina. And I was living in Indiana at the time and uh, was crying about my problems to her. Um, I asked her for money. She said, let me call you back. Um, later, my phone rang, and it was my mom. She said, uh, I talked to your dad, and we're not sending you any money. But you have a place to stay if you want to come down here and get your head up. So the next morning, I went for South Carolina. It was around 2005. I told myself I was only going to stay for a couple weeks. One of the mess went on my life. I was heartbroken, feeling like a failure, all while not realizing what going cold turkey was going to be like. Because for the first time since I started doing drugs, I'm not, I, I didn't have any, anything at my uh, availability. Of course, in my mind, I still wasn't a drug addict because I could, I could control it. My secret was safe. I stayed sober for 18 months. Well, I only drank and took pain pills. That's sober, right? I got that on meds for my disorder. Two disorders. Life was looking good. Um, when things going well, and I started hanging out with a co-worker. Little did I know, he sold cocaine, weed, and ecstasy. Life was back in the past. Lane. We partied hard seven days a week. I was driving him to get drugs, and then driving him to sell drugs. My life was out of control. Once again, the calls were uh, pulling us over on a regular basis, and we kept getting lucky. Then one night, he was in a hurry but didn't wait for me, and uh, he got busted and went to prison. And instead of me getting out there, I just took over his clients and his connects, and um, I kept on trucking and with my addiction and with my newfound profession dealing drugs. I was going on um, to be uh, robbed by gunpoint there several times. I was tired and I wanted out. Well, I didn't realize like that at the time. And in Psalms 40, um, to, or yeah, 40, 12, I'm sorry. From numeral evils had encompassed me. My sins have overtaken me, so that I am not able to see. They are more numerous than the hairs on my head, and my heart has failed me. That's how I was feeling at the time. Just didn't realize there was an answer, and that answer was Jesus. So, guess what? I took a break, but I still didn't get out. After all, I wasn't a drug addict. I left South Carolina and moved back to Indiana. Now, the two weeks that I originally was going to go down there for turned into four years. So, I got two jobs when I moved back to Indiana in the same old apartment. And I was back taking my psych meds again. And I was sober again. Well, I was only taking pain pills and that all, right? So, what if they were prescribed to me? I was sober. Things, however, were pretty calm for the next few years. You know, I mentioned I tried some boxing and sudden text. Still not, still not an addict, though. I moved um, from the Indy back to my home, or near my hometown, and not realizing it had become um, a place of major drug, uh, drug epidemic. There was one going on at the time. I was still using uh, sudden text daily until my guy got arrested, and he was to say, I really got dope sick for the first time after that because um, I had never been dope yet sick before until now. And when I got uh, hurt at work, I thought I, I was lucky. And you know, say, how can you be lucky almost seven in your finger? Well, I knew I was getting pain pills. 
in the Payville, they actually helped me get off February 10th. And around that time, my parents moved back to Indiana, and I moved uh, in with them. And I stayed pretty low key for a couple of years, and I was um, on my medications again. And and every now and then, uh, I took a pill every now and then, and thinking it wasn't going to kill me, right? No, when I say pill, pain pill, that well. So I did a very good job. Um, once again, another great job because it's a long life pattern there. And once again, things were going great. I was even talking to my son mom again, you know, the one I was in the one of the other relationship for 12 years. Not a good idea, huh? But I did it anyways. And um, during that time, one rainy day in a job site trailer, I was offered a line. And not this time, and it wasn't Coke this time, it was Mass. Needless to say, I was back in the fast lane doing lots of drugs at work and with her. And, uh, and when things went south with her, which I never shocked her, right? I lost my job because I couldn't make it to work on time because of the drugs. So what do I do? I start dealing drugs. Now I was in a deep, I was deep in the game, and the game was not kind to me. I started to uh, making Coke. I wasn't wrong until I injected heroin. First time I injected heroin, I overdosed. It's only by the grace of God that I'm alive. It just didn't slow me down much. As a matter of fact, a few weeks later, I witnessed my first overdose. The girl overdosed in my car, and my parents wanted to leave her on the ground. They were on the ground to leave her in the gravel. And I said, no, we're going to take her to an ambulance. Well, she got the ambulance ride, and I got the back to jail with the, the police officers for that paraphernalia. Um, I was in jail for about 48 hours and um, got a warrant and left, left and we got two blocks and had my knee, and another knee to lay my arm in 10 minutes of release. This was a fall of 2017. I didn't go to court on that warrant and a warrant was issued. Um, eventually I was picked up on that warrant. He got slapped on the hand and did a total of eight days. Once again, I was released and high again in 15 minutes. October 2017, I was living to get high and thinking I needed to be high to live. At this moment, I was broke. I had isolated myself. I had no home. I had lost my vehicle. I had lost my license. I no longer weighed 200 pounds. I was down to 135 pounds. I alienated my family. And yet, this was not my rock bottom. It's a real challenge trying to be the dope man at this point because of all the things, negative things behind me, and I still didn't see it. I ended up back in my hometown, not by my first choice. However, it was a place to crash. I was staying in RD. My paranoia was pretty bad, but I didn't slow down. On February 1st, 2018, what started out to be the worst day of my life ended up being one of the best days of my life. I got arrested, and I went to jail. Of course, that day, I, um, I was convinced I was an innocent man, and I was going to fight the law and win because I wasn't a drug addict. Then I was a vicious beast. My first day in jail happened to be uh, church day. I remember making the comment that I was not going to get jail. I was religion and be a hypocrite. And then I found out there were cookies, and I decided that the cookies were were sitting through the church. Despite that, what I, that I, what I previously thought, lightning did not strike me dead, plus the cookies were good. A few weeks passed by, and uh, I still had not had any contact with anybody outside the jail. Um, the jail was offering free screenings for hep C and HIV, and I chose to get tested. Um, I was taken to the booking office. The lady from my spine showed up and um, was with the jailer. And she goes, I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I, all I need you to do is ask, answer the questions, yes or no. Our first question was, have you ever drank alcohol? Me. My answer was, yes, but not that. And she says, stop, please. Just answer yes or no. My answer was yes. So the next question was, have you ever, been, have you ever used marijuana? Me. Well, a few times. And she said, stop again. Please just answer yes or no. And I said yes. Well, she asked me about another 20 questions and went through the same song and dance. Every question ended up with me, inter her interrupting me and saying, please just answer yes or no. Um, at the, I answered yes to every question. 
and at the and at the end, I was sitting there thinking, "Wow, I'm a drug addict." Well, actually, I what? Or actually, I just thought it was a private thought. I was actually thinking, or saying this stuff out loud. I felt the chains break. I may have still been in jail. To that moment, I became a free man. In that exact moment, my thinking uh, was completely rearranged because before I went into that room, I was thinking all the reasons why I couldn't. Uh, and when I left that room, I started thinking of all the reasons why I can. I can't ask for help. I am a drug addict. I can't ask for help. I can't ask God for forgiveness. I can't recover. I can't amend damaged relationships and so on. So I continued to go to jail on Thursday. While I was in jail, I continued to go to church on Thursdays. Um, this time, not just for the cookies. I hopefully admitted I needed, it, needed to help. However, I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to get saved. Then I wake up one morning and my hand was swollen. And if I ask him, well, what's this got to do with it? Well, I had a uh, nurse in my system. And I knew what it was when the, when the, the first part of the the wound started and um, so they because I'd had it on my knee before and so the would be an IV user to call it this infection even though I had to have surgery on my hand they said that being a blessing in disguise and the reason it was a blessing um, is because it gave me um, time one on one with the jail commander and the jail commander was also a, a pastor at a church, a local church. And so I was able to ask him a lot of questions that I had about God, about the Bible, and about my salvation. That's when I started to move out of the way and allow God in my heart. And on February 27th, 2018, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And a few weeks later, um, I got baptized in a padded cell. Yes, I said a padded cell. In a swimming pool, in a padded cell. I was now about four weeks from my stay in jail until I not had any contact with anyone outside the jail. Um, the reason for that was I went to jail with a phone with no numbers um, because I was too lazy to activate it the night before. And I started to uh, I started to do Bible studies and I started reading the Bible. Um, looking back, I now see the presence of God. My cursing was slowly disappearing. My dirty, twisted mind was becoming worse and I was no longer talking about getting high. On week five, my mom visited me in jail for the first time. She said she had feared the worst and I didn't come home on February 23rd because that was my birthday and uh, she thought that I might have died. It was a good visit and for the first time I openly confessed I was a drug addict. I told her I got saved and I wanted to uh, get help for my addiction. She didn't have to say it, I saw her face. I know she wanted to believe it, but she had doubts. I decided at that moment I was going to turn it all over to Christ. And I was going to get sober. Because I never wanted to see that uh, look at my mom's face again. His way had to be better than my way. About week six, I was given a celebrate recovery study Bible. Um, and that, that came from my biological dad. And I spent about two weeks um, devoted to reading it. I hope to find a medium for my release. It was during this time that I was introduced to all the principles without even knowing that I'd already really kind of worked through the first four. Um, in Jeremiah 29, 11, but I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. It was an easy decision to submit to God. I obviously wasn't successful at making good decisions for myself. I also was realizing that putting God first produced favorable, favorable results. So I thought, why not ask him to remove all my character defects? On April 1st, 2018, I was released from jail. Yes, April Fool's Day. And um, April 1st just happened to be Easter Sunday that year. And past the red, I told him I'd go to first, the first Sunday that I got out of jail, which is the jail commander. And so he took me home, dropped me off, picked me up, and took me to church. Uh, just here recently, someone asked me, what if you were to get out of jail on Monday? Would you move to church? I wish I could say yes, but I don't know. I was scared to people at church, and by going as soon as I got out was probably the best thing because it, it got rid of all my fears. I tasted them all immediately that day. 
And when I got to church, um, everyone welcomed me, actually. And uh, I was treated as though I was the one of my family member that hadn't been there in a while. I felt loved by all. And since that day, I've not been able to, they have not been able to get rid of me. That day was the first step in changing my people, places, and things. And that day, I went to church. My first day out of jail, a few hours into the, my freedom. I wanted to trust Christ and fulfill the plan he had for me. I went to center stone meetings. I went to doctor's appointments. I went to probation appointments. I went to uh, Great Oak meetings. I went to NA meetings. And I went to CR meetings. With every past blood screen, it seemed like I took another step out of the grave. I was learning how to live sober for the first time in over 20 years. I was also learning how to balance my life for the first time in my whole life. I was learning how to trust God for the first time in my whole life. And I was learning the Word in the Bible. My whole life, I searched for unconditional love. I wanted to belong, be a part of the brotherhood. I didn't find it in chasing women. I didn't find it in drugs. I didn't find it in money. I didn't find it in fast cars. The problem was I was looking in all the wrong places. What I was looking for was with me my whole life. When I got out of the way, God showed me the way. And He continues to show me the way each and every day. Now I live to give Him all my praise and all my glory. Psalms 40, um, chapter, uh, verse 2 and 3. He lifted me out of a slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a mortal rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. I've been sober now for a little over two years. In that time, I have restored everything that you may try to kill, still or destroy. God has given me life in abundance. I could have not, I could not have gone on my own without God surrounding me with angels to protect me and women and men of strong faith to teach me the word. I am worthy and so are you. I've also um, had the, the privilege and uh, the awesome opportunity I need to celebrate recovery group on, on every Friday. And um, the victory is yours, man. All you have to do is want it. And then let God give it to you. I give him all the glory all the time. Always through God. Amen.